For farmers, making sure your fruit is perfectly ripe and your meat full of flavor is never easy. Artificial intelligence could be the game changer that could transform all of that. For more insight into AI in agriculture, Ian Kahn joins us now. He's a theoretical futurist, television host, and author of Undisrupted. Welcome to the show. I don't think I've ever met a theoretical futurist, so it's so good to Hi, have Karina. you on, Ian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let me start by saying AI has infiltrated every part of our lexicon, right? And life, it seems. Can you explain the benefits of incorporating it into agriculture? What's the cost-benefit analysis there, if you will? Of course. Karina, agriculture is the world's oldest profession. And by far, you know, about 100 years ago, a lot of people used to work in agriculture. Now, that paradigm is shifting. There are less and less people getting into agriculture. It's hard work. You've got to, you know, get in there and, and do very, very hard work. As a result of that, the agriculture industry is facing a challenge. But if there's no agriculture, how are all the mouths going to feed? And how are 9 billion people on the planet going to be fed in the next, uh, you know, next decade? decade or two decades. Uh, AI is at an amazing place right now. In my opinion, it's still at a very initial stage of being what it can be, but it's making its impact in some very specific industries, including agriculture. And we're just starting to explore what it can do. And the cost benefit saving is just one of those things. You can, you're can you looking at increasing uh, crop yield through research that takes place because of AI. You can look at um, protection from pests uh, and weeds. You can look at uh, you know improving supply chain uh, and all of those different things that happen within a typical farm anywhere in the world is just a matter of that happening right now. Well, despite those sort of macro benefits, if you will, what do you say to small individual farmers that say AI and the costs associated with it are just impeding their livelihoods? So what is happening with technology is that it is a well-known thing that when something new comes up, you know, it's the costs are prohibitive. It's, it exp it's expensive. But as technology matures, the costs go down. You know, right now, as of today, there are apps on, uh, on the Apple and the Google uh, app stores with which you can take a picture of a leaf and it'll tell you what that plant is. And you can do that for, for weeds. Any farmer can take those apps and start taking pictures and figuring it out. You don't need massive amount of automation. You don't need to, you know, have a data center in your farm. But it's really about thinking differently and thinking, hey, how can I, as a farmer, use technology to help me do better, increase my yield, take care of my crops, and, and do all of that? So the tools are available. And it's a step-by-step -step process rather than jumping in with, with huge investments. Take small steps, and those tools are available. So it seems like it really can help address quality control issues that even small farmers can benefit from. But let me ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges tied to data and privacy accessibility, for example? Of course, see, digital inclusion is a big challenge in no matter which country you're in, from America to Australia, the entire world covered. Uh, technology is ex expensive to implement, and a typical farmer is not working on a very big margin and has a lot of uh, profits. You know, farmers work on very lean margins, and it's important for them their investments in technology make sense and they reap the rewards. In many cases, the, the, the cash flow has to support those investments. And that, I think, is the big challenge. But technology, as it becomes more complex, the costs are also dropping. And so it will become much better in the next few days, weeks, months, and years for any small farmer or, or large farmer to be able to incorporate some technologies within their farm and go one step at a time. So it's really important to know what they need and what you need as a farmer and how that looks like and what's the transition phase over the next few years, if you will. And so do you think AI is the future of agriculture? And then also I'm interested in knowing what the environmental impact of using AI in farming is. Of course, see, any farmer, any industry connected with, uh, with farming wants it to be more productive. We, yes, we want more yield. We want better, more beautiful looking tomatoes and cherries. We all need that, right? We need less wastage. And, and AI can help address many of those things if we have the right data, if we start integrating that into, into our processes. I recently worked with North Carolina Sweet uh, Potato Commission in understanding how potato, sweet potatoes are grown in North Carolina and what's the journey of those. 
In many places, AI is used to identify potatoes, size them, process them, and so on and so forth. Um, and so that has to be kept into consideration. Where is AI being used and what part of AI is being used? Uh, in terms of costs, you, you really have, I think the second part of your question was relating to cost, right? Uh, if you really have to understand your business process, your farming process to be able to say, here's where I need help, and to consult with people and experts and companies that actually can help you, uh, and your profitability will take care of the cost. So that's one. Environmental, you asked me about the environmental impact. AI in general has a cost of running, right? There are servers running, there are big machineries running that are enabling AI in the back end. And I think technology companies are doing a great job in addressing this and making these operations sustainable using renewable energy. So I think as long as that balance is created, uh, you know, we shouldn't stop ourselves from using and maximizing the utilization of AI. It will be so interesting to see what the future holds. That was a fantastic discussion. Ian Khan, thank you so much for your time.